Grow, Sell, and Retire is the podcast for the lazy overachiever. B.D. Dalton, author of True Gravity and Grow, Sell, and Retire, is here to give you his 25 years of secrets, tips, and systems to take your business to the next level. This is your chance to find out what is working in sales, marketing, and running your business. If you stop learning, you stop burning. Now, here's your host, BD, with today's GSR Podcast. Hey everybody, BD Dalton here from the Grow, Sell, and Retire Podcast. I've got another great interview today, and we have him coming back. His name is Simon Barry. He is king of Snapchat. He is a blockchain know-it-all guru and also cryptocurrencies. But guess what? He's also helped a lot of fintech businesses start up. He's helped a lot of startups make things go forward. So today we're going to be talking about tech. We're going to be talking about startups. We're going to be talking about things that you can do in your business to make sure the clients are more sticky, make sure that things happen for you to bring in the types of clients that you want. Because on Grow, Sell, and Retire, if you haven't been here before, my whole goal for you, and this is what I bring my speakers on for and people to interview for you, is to create lazy overachievers. So sit back, grab a pen, grab a coffee, because if you've read my book, Grow, Sell, and Retire, it's all about coffee. Um, but make sure that you get ready to learn more, to have some fun, and enjoy yourself with me and my interview with Simon Barry, Grow, Sell, and Retire podcast. B.D. Dalton, listen up. Welcome, Simon Barry, on the Grow, Sell, and Retire podcast. Welcome back, I should actually say. I enjoyed it so much talking to you last time about crypto and about blockchain and all the other stuff that we talked about that I had to have you back to talk about some of the other stuff you do. Absolutely. And it was a blast last time. So I'm really looking forward to today as well. So I've, I've sat back and I've gone through a lot of the stuff that you've done. I've looked at, uh, listened to some of the stuff you, you talk about online. And I want to ask you, because our clients are looking to be lazy overachievers. So they're trying to use not just technology, but systems and, and ways to make it so that they can be lazy overachievers, super lazy. And that doesn't mean, and people sometimes kick back and go, well, I don't want to be lazy. Everybody wants to be lazy, mate. Everybody wants to do things <laughs> the easiest way possible. And it's just lazy is this moniker that's been put out there that people don't want to live up to, but everybody does want to live up to it. So if we're looking at ways to make it so that we keep clients or the ways that we do this, and when you are dealing with different businesses, how are some of the ways that you're looking to make tech companies, regular startup companies, and even companies that are currently engaged, make sticky clients? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, that's the real trick, isn't it? And, and you know, kind of sticky clients is, uh, is what everyone wants. Uh, there's competition everywhere. I mean, it is a real challenge. Uh, and, and here's what I've really found. I think you've really got to offer value in what you do. So many people think it's about just throwing your product out there and, and doing, you know, paying someone to do a bit of marketing for you. And it's, it's so much deeper than that. I think you've got to have a connection with, with yourself and your clients. So you, you've got to really be exceptional in, in some of the things that you do. Have that exceptional customer service. Go that extra mile. Uh, when, when you're releasing a product or a service, you know, actually do that extra bit of polish so it's absolutely awesome. And, and show you really care because when it's your clients, and, and, you know, when you're focusing on the people, whether things go good or bad, um, I think people people really enjoy that human touch uh, and that, that kind of bit of extra care. And, and those are the things that make the headlines. So, so I think to make your clients sticky, you know, treat them as real people, treat them as humans and treat them with respect. And I think they will absolutely love you for it. So can you think of a, an example of some, something that really went wrong for, for a company, even, even maybe not one that you're dealing with, one that you've heard about, where they went above and beyond to make sure that, oops, we've screwed up and here, here's, here's how we're going to say sorry because we can't take that back? Absolutely. I mean, you, you, you see it, you know, when, when people have trouble with airlines, right, they, they will go on social media and start ranting and raving. Okay? And, and sometimes the airlines will be terrible about it. But some of the ones who come back and say, I'm really sorry about your service, you know, we'll, we'll upgrade your flight, we'll, we'll you know, make sure you're, you're all right, we'll give you a refund. And, and they're, they're nice and humble about it. And it goes back to the point for about you know, being sticky, isn't it? it? It's about showing that respect for your, for your customers. So th those are the stories that make the headlines because you, know, you, you don't have to put yourself out there. You don't have to, as, as a corporation, you know, go, go above and beyond for your clients. But, you know, if there's a cancel flight or, you know, your, your product's not been good enough in terms of quality, then, 
then you you show that you really care and you love your client and it's not just about the dollars it's it's about uh, you know making sure that your clients going above and beyond and i think the, you know the perfect example is how some of these airlines behave some of them get fantastic rave reviews and some of them will literally just you know <laughs> leave you to rant on customer service and on twitter and things like that and uh, and and they're getting you know negative reviews because these days everything is out there all the time you know it's it's a public forum and uh, people have you know people have these these places they they can put their opinions about you and your company out there so i think you've got to be really careful cool and i think in in general even though you're you're not ready for it and just like buying insurance nobody ever wants to have you know everybody calls it life insurance it's actually death insurance you know it's not life insurance Absolutely. it's it's, it's the, the the moniker is not there the marketing is not right but you know nobody else will buy it if it's called death insurance but i think if if you're going to go out there and you're going to create communities online you need to make sure you're ready to handle negativity. So your team needs to be able to have a system in place, how they're supposed to communicate when there's, negative, when there's negative press or when there's negative social media. How do you do that? Because most people think that they're going to be rosy and everything else. So you've got to make sure that your team knows how to handle it because I've Absolutely. heard of people going on a rant back to the ranters and that Absolutely. makes you look like a it's, it's a spiral and it makes things worse. So, uh, you know, I mean, a, a lot of great examples is a lot, a lot of the train lines in the UK actually have people who almost see it like a DJ station. So they introduce themselves as a person and fair enough, people are going online and, and they're, they're talking about train delays and cancellations and problems and issues, but they're speaking to a real human. It's, it's not, uh, you know, some, some automated service. And, and, you know, these people are superstars who, who are, you know, keeping a sense of humor, but also trying to help people as much as they can. And it can't be an easy job, but, uh, you know, the, the people who are winning and, and showing the respect for the customer are the, are the ones who get the accolades. So I think when we look at this, and, and I think what both of us are taking out of this is the more you deal with the public, the more you get your community dealing with you and selling for you, the more you need to have systems in place and people in place, team members, to make sure that they're controlling you can't control what people say about you, but controlling how you deal with it. You, you can control how you respond to that. And, and of course you have the right systems and the right people in place. And, and you ultimately have at, at the heart of what you do, the, the respect and the humanity to, to deal with it properly. That's cool. So if you want to mirror it on something like, like Simon was just talking about, we don't want to give anything away, but, but like your like Virgin trains, if, if you want to follow some people out there that want to respond and have some humor with it, I've had some good correspondence back and forth about late trains and everything else with some Virgin trains people. Absolutely. Yeah. And it, it swings both ways as well. But, uh, you know, I think as a, as a corporation, we just need to be very careful about, you know, how, how we interact because these these things get out there, and uh, you know it can it can often make or break reputations for uh, for ourselves and our companies. Cool. So you deal with a lot of startup companies. You deal with a lot of regular companies. Everybody wants to have an app so that they can get their people to engage. And I don't know how many apps I have on my phone that I don't use that I download because I went and did something. How are you seeing that people become not just just another app, the, you know, the Simon Barry app for counting apples. How do, how do we become not another, just another app? Well, I think we, we've kind of got over the hump where having an app was funky and cool and different. You know, these, these days it's very easy. There's even ways to drag and drop and make an app. And, you know, uh, the, the technical ability required, the barrier to entry has become a lot lower. So it's not as funky and cool as it was in the old days to have an app. And I don't know about you, when in the early days of, of smartphones, I was literally downloading every app I possibly could do. But now I think we have got to be a bit more choosy and a bit more careful. So, so the thing is, we, we've got to be different. We've got to be original. Um, it's not about you know cookie cutter approaches or or just coming up with some standard design or or even looking at what other people do and and certainly you know go out there and look for inspiration. But you, you've got to forge your own path. You know the apps out there that are succeeding and doing well are ones that kind of flip the script, that are being bold and original, that can actually offer some utility and some valuable service you know if you're having an app that mirrors your website um or is just some basic text scrolling thing that doesn't do anything special then then it's not really doing something magical or something that people are going to get excited about so if you're going to make an app what's it there for what are you going to use it for what utility are you doing so uh, i'll give you an example of, i'm waiting on a parcel today from dpd you know they've got an app where you can download it it will tell you exactly where my parcel is in the queue i was number 20 of 
94. It gives me a GPS location of where my driver is. It tells me my driver's name. I can put my picture in. I can give instructions. Therefore, the utility on the app makes it much more convenient for me to go and use their system versus going and using the website, which I found, you know, harder to use. So, you know, just, just wrapping your website or your services around an app doesn't necessarily make it useful. I think you've got to, you've got to be, be original these days. And people have to understand their demographic too, because when I put videos out on Facebook, it's really, really scary because when I actually look at the demographic that actually looks at it, it is, um, 45 to 50 year, 55 year old males looking at it on their mobile phone. Um, <laughs> it's like, who, what, that's, that's definitely not, if I was choosing to be on a dating site or something that, uh, whatever, whichever way you, you, you go, it's, that's not the way I am. <laughs> and I just, why is my demographic that? But, then I have to figure out if I'm going to create an app or if I'm going to do something like that. And you were coaching me through that. I'd have to figure out what those guys want to do. So after they're on Facebook, what are they going to do? They're probably going to go on and, you know, not trying to be sexist, but they're going to go on and check their sports scores. They're going to check their, the portfolio and then they're going to go onto their bank and then they're going to book an Uber. So absolutely. I mean, without going into into heavy technical stuff, it's very, very easy to, uh, to AB test and, and figure out who exactly is using your app and your services. So you can start, you know, tailoring the look, the functionality in the field. So, uh, you know, you, these days, you know, you, you're armed with all this data to give yourself a, a better chance so that uh, your, your app or your service is, is actually being tailored to, to who is actually using it. And, you know, your, your Facebook example is a perfect one. If, if your demographic is, is different or, or, you know, from a, a different era or, you know, likes different things, then uh, you're, you're able to go out there and adapt and change so that you're able to serve your, your clients better. That's cool. And A-B testing, that came up in my interview with Fausto. So A-B, uh, that was his big thing is test it, test it, and, you know, do it, re- redo it, test again. You know, you have to. If, if you don't test it, you will yeah. never know. It's just a stab in the dark, right? So you you have to go out there and test these things and know that, that you're on the right track or crucially whether you're not on the right track so you can actually, you know, correct yourself. That's cool. Okay. So you deal with all types of businesses. You know, you're doing some, some work with us. You're doing some all, all sorts of things. So what are three small business tips that you can give? Startup, whatever you want is. But it's one of those where if they, if they did this when they were back in the day, even if they're an established business, they'd be a better established business now. Yeah, I mean, I think there's, I mean, there's, there's kind of universal truths that, that work across all businesses. Um, you know, w- one point I'd say is surround yourself with people who, who can do what you can't. So many people, you know, especially in early stages of business, surround yourself with their friends or, or their mates or people that they work in business with. They don't necessarily surround themselves with people who can fulfill the business functions that, that they lack or that they may be missing. And, and you'll even find this in, in larger corporates where, where they're not actually thinking operationally about what they're trying to do. They might be grown to a different stage and they need different skill sets or different services or, or maybe some of their staff have actually grown from being, you know, within the department and now head of that department and they now need a different skill set. So, so really focusing on, you know, where your company is now and what kind of skills you need is, is vitally important and sometimes stepping back and doing that is, is very important. Um, finding your strengths and hiring people that absolutely absolutely and some some of the biggest businesses and, and biggest leaders in business will actually say that you know hire people more intelligent than yourself or hire people to do what you can't and it's absolutely vital that actually gets you that that step up and that that step forward um kind of related to that is my my second point which is asking for help you know i think we can also get very very swamped and you know, in a position where we're not quite sure where, where the step forward is. And, and this is where things like, uh, you know, consultancy services or uh, mentors or coaches can really come in and, and, and come and help and support you. Sometimes you, you can't see the wood for the trees. You can't take that helicopter view and, and step back. And sometimes you're not sure what, what the next steps are. You know, do you have the right team? Do you have the right product or services? You know, do are you viewed in, in the right way? Is, is your marketing on point? And sometimes putting your hand up and saying, you know, I, I need a bit of help. You know, I, I need to figure out how, how to go forward. You know, often when you're, you've grown a company, you know, you're SME or you're trying to grow into a larger blue chip company, you're navigating waters you, you haven't navigated before. You know, sometimes you need a bit of help and support on that point. I think that's, uh, that's vital. That's huge. And the, the funny thing is, and in, in, in people don't, when they're given positions of power or their clients give them positions of power, which they've asked for, Sometimes we get to a point where we're way past our 
uh, knowledge, skill base, anything like that. We don't want to admit it. And so it actually creates a huge amount of stress in our lives. And it's, you know, a big thing. Well, you know, one of my my next question to you is going to be after, after we get through number three is going to be, how do we stop from failing as an entrepreneur? Absolutely. So, so my, my number, my number one point is, is always keep learning. Uh, and that's kind of related to the other ones, you know, asking for help and surrounding yourself with the right people. If, if you're kind of staying static as, uh, as a person and you're not, you know, taking additional training or maybe taking some leadership skills or, or some management skills or, or, or learning what's going on, they, then you're going to get left behind. You know, this, this world is changing fast, you know, different skills are required, different management methods come out, you know, different ways of organizations. And, and if you're not keeping up with what's going on, then you're probably going to miss out on something. You're going to miss out a way that might make your company more efficient. You're going to miss out on technology that might revolutionize how your company works or open up new products and services. And I, and I think having that kind of learning hat on thinking, you know, I've left school, I've, I've done my university, my learning is over. No, it's, it's completely the opposite. I think once you're, once you're out in the big bad world, you know, and especially if, you know, you, you're, you're working for a corporation, no matter what size, I think you've got to be open and, and very receptive to, to being on that learning journey and realize that, that, you know, as, as you go along your path and as your company grows, you, you need to keep, you know, your eyes and ears open to those opportunities. If you stop learning, you stop earning. That's absolutely my, my big, my big U S thing. I could throw a big Southern draw on there, but I, I won't. Um, so then how about one more tip to keep from failing as an entrepreneur? Um, I, I'll get, I'll give you two tips. Um, and they're kind of, kind of related. Wow, so, uh, so, <laughs> and it, they're kind of obvious, but you know, it's kind of worth underlining to be completely clear about it. Never, ever give up. I think if you give up, you're guaranteed to fail. And uh, I, I don't think entrepreneurs are cut from a special cloth or, or any different from anyone else. That was a big eye opener for me. But uh, the fact that they'll dust themselves off and keep going is something you need to learn. It's it's a quality you learn. Uh, and the second thing is, is to accept that things fail. Some people think that if something doesn't work, it's the end of the world. Um, I think people tend to focus too much on, on what the process they're doing and think that maybe maybe their goal is is rubbish because their process was rubbish you know never lose sight of what your end goal is and learn to iterate learn to change your approach and move on and and i think that's absolutely vital for for growing any business and whether you're entrepreneur or not but particularly for an entrepreneur because having that kind of bulletproof you know people will try and knock me down you know other people will try and knock you down you know you have to have that i'll pick myself up i've gone down the wrong road i'll reverse back up and i'll try again and uh, believe me, it may take you, you know, 15 tries. It might take you <laughs> a thousand tries. You know, if you keep going, you will find the right path. That for you is the best route to, to success. No, oh, that's really cool. And I think that's, that's that big thing is, and I found this big difference. And you and I started talking about today is, you know, it's been stinking hot here in the UK and we complain about the weather and we complain about, we complain about the weather when it's good. We complain about the weather when it's bad. Absolutely. And the big thing happens in entrepreneurship is in the U.S. I, I don't know why it is, but we're we're bred to be entrepreneurs. I think in in, a, in more of a way because everybody wants to know if you're walking down the street, if somebody's driving a really posh car or lives in a really nice house or can always go out to dinner at the places you want to go out to dinner, you, you'd walk up to him and go, "What what do you do? How can how can I learn to be oh. you?" And over here, it's God. Simon must have killed somebody or won the lottery or maybe his family got him into a business. Jeez, he's, he's so lucky. You know, it's just a, it's a different way of, of viewing things. And I know it's a generalization, but it's a, it's a huge thing that happens over here. I don't, I don't want people to be jealous. We want to be, everybody to be lazy overachievers because then you can buy more stuff from me and I can buy more stuff from you. Absolutely. I mean, I, I see it changing and, and I think it's largely due to, to who you surround yourself with. You know, there's that old saying that, you know, you're the average of the five people you network with. Uh, and you'll find that your wages kind of harmonize and your opportunities kind of work together. So uh, you have been listening to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if you know, it, it works, doesn't it? You know, if, if you, if you change who you, who you network with, then the different opportunities and different doors open and different things happen. And it's, you know, it's an awesome thing. So, uh, you know, if, if, if you're having the attitude that, you know, why on earth is that person driving that fast car or you're networking with people who've done it and you're learning from them, then it's a whole different mindset. And it's uh, all not encourage that growth mindset rather than that. Why on earth are these people doing better than me? You know, it's a, it'd be aspirational rather than jealous. That's cool. 
Um, and entrepreneurs, business owners, even managers get too close to their business, don't they? Absolutely. I think, you know, people get, uh, they kind of have a sense of ownership. Um, and, and believe me, you know, caring is a good thing. It, it's brilliant. And the hard thing, especially with an entrepreneur, is to learn to let go. And one of my mistakes when I was a, a very early entrepreneur is thinking I had to wear all my hats. You know, I had to be the, the CEO, I had to do be the CFO, I had to be the project manager, I had to do the sales, I had to do the marketing. I nearly burnt out. That was just the wrong way to do it. But you kind of think, this is my responsibility. And it goes back to the, the points before with sur- surrounding yourself with the right kind of team. You know, once I kind of learned that the hard way, um, I surrounded myself with people who have the talent that you're that are able to help you to reach your goals, and and that's that's a big thing. So uh, you know, being an entrepreneur can be a massively lonely business, but the big thing about it is is when you open yourself up and and you work with other people and you collaborate, it becomes less lonely. It becomes more exciting, more fulfilling, and it can take a small business into being something that's absolutely stratospheric, and it's it's amazing. So so I think you know. Mm-hmm separating is is almost letting go of that selfishness where you kind of think it's all on me or it isn't you know share that responsibility share that burden and and the rewards can be massively bigger than than you ever thought possible and in general us as entrepreneurs and especially successful ones we're control freaks in different in different ways so we have to figure out what what we want to be a control freak about and then absolutely and say letting go is not easy is it It, it's difficult thing to do but you know it, it, you kind of have to do it if if you're going to have the bandwidth to be able to grow it's it's as simple as that okay now for the fun question <laughs> so so what what type of we, we've talked about it before but anybody that didn't listen to the other podcast what's your goal for 2018 or just how about for the next 12 months well i'm very lucky to have joined an excellent company called bd consulting so uh, i'm hoping to to grow um you know that's going to be awesome. I think there's a start of something amazing. So with it, I think there's lots of synergies and exciting clients to, to work on this year. Uh, I'm also launching a blockchain startup, and um, so that's that's going to hopefully go later this year. Cool. We'll have to talk about that separately. Absolutely. That sounds like fun. Um, so that's that's one of your projects you're working on. Talk, talk about the project you're working on because this. Yeah. So so let's let's expand on that a little. So uh, the, the the big project is is a blockchain media empire. It's a, it's business focused. Um, think of Bloomberg for blockchain. It's about it's about as much as I'm going to say right now. But uh, I'm putting together the team right now, and uh, hopefully going to make a make a big splash. Uh, Rupert make- Murblock. That's your <laughs> that's right. Rupert Murblock. That's what we're going to call you from now on. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with that. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, that works. No, it's okay. I mean, we could we could be haters, but in general, that the media empires he, he owns one. Ted Turner. I couldn't oh, think. Yeah. I couldn't think of one that gets in Ted Turner's space. So, um, how about how about what's your favorite piece of tech right now? Because I, well, I don't know. I'm I'm going to go the opposite of of. <laughs> I'm going to subvert this question. So I love tech. Uh, literally, I'll have anything shiny and new. I absolutely love it. I I do it. But what I've been finding is actually going back and using old t- tech, I suppose, in inverted commas, actually makes a huge difference. So I've been investing in nice pads of paper and nice pens and writing my to-do list down because actually the, the very act of writing things down actually stores it in a different, more permanent part of your brain. And actually putting a line through when you've done a task is quite amazing. Now, I found I'd have it in notes on my iPhone or I'd have some to-do list and I'd lose it and I'd not know what the hell was going on. But if I've got a page uh, on a to-do list that I've got to do, I the satisfaction of writing something down and the satisfaction of putting a line or a tick next to it is absolutely awesome. So, so I would highly recommend people who are probably struggling with to-do list apps, um, they don't work for me in my brain, uh, actually go old tech and old style it will never run out of battery. You know, you'll, you'll never have to charge it up. You know, you, you can write down amazing ideas as they come to you. Keep a, keep a pen and paper on you at all times. That's cool. And that's what my, my big tip to everybody is if, if you go into meetings, if, if you run meetings, if you're in meetings ever, always take notes. Always, always, absolutely. always, always take notes because it makes, makes people know that you're paying attention. It makes a point of reference for that conversation. And, 75 to 90% of the time, you'll never look at those notes again. But, Absolutely. But the, 
they're in your brain somewhere. So that's, they're in your brain somewhere. And you'll take your one or two sentences off that and put it into your, your iPhone or into your, onto your desktop or into a thank you note to them. But Absolutely. always, always, always take notes. Um, okay. How can we learn more about you? Uh, I'm very active on Twitter, so I'd recommend you follow me on Twitter. Uh, I have an unusual name on Twitter. It's Egwisk, E-W-G-W-H-I-S-K. You can, uh, you can tweet me and ask me why I have that name. There is a story behind it. Mm-hmm. Um, or you can go to my website, which is simonberry.tv. Simonberry.tv. Now, it's going to be Rupert Murblock pretty fairly soon. You're going to... Right, I'll have to go and buy that. Rupert, Rupert TV. <laughs> TV. No, I've already bought it. I'll sell it to you, though. No. <laughs> I just camped on it. Okay, what about one quick fire tip? Um, we've, given, we've given huge amounts of tips, but what if they're just coming in now and they are at minute 24 going, oh my gosh, I've skipped through the whole thing because you know, I just couldn't take all of that information and it was so amazing. What is one tip that you can offer our listeners that they should do today to make sure that they can have a lazy overachiever sort of week? Yeah, I mean, it's, for me, focus on the goal. Where, where are you heading? Where are you going? But be flexible and adaptive in your journey. So basically, learn, iterate, move forward. That's my Very tip. cool. Very cool. Well, Simon Barry, thank you so much for coming on the show. Gross Hill and Retire listeners appreciate you. And it's been an absolute blast and an absolute pleasure. Cool. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Make sure you like, subscribe, follow, do everything you do. Pass it along to friends because if everybody's a lazy overachiever, our world becomes a better place. Thanks for joining us on Grow, Sell, and Retire. For more information, tools, or to book one of our team members to work with your team, business, or to speak at your event or conference, visit BartDaltonConsulting.com or email contact at BartDaltonConsulting.com. Buy the book True Gravity on Amazon. If you want to work for the rest of your life, that is your business. If you don't, that is ours.